Ethiopia, going around um, Nebraska University, West Central Research Center. It's quite a unique place. It's about six or seven of similar things in the world where they can do the full research from livestock to pesticides application, to the seeds quality and stuff like that. Uh, there's a big facility. They have a field part where they have uh, all the testings and they have a lot of uh, warehousing with a bunch of equipment and stuff. So it's, it's pretty well set place. And it actually was established in 1903. So it's over hundred years old guys. So it has some uh, history. Uh, and it's still around, so it, it is very uh, unique and helpful to a farming community uh, with discoveries. We've been here for two days now, learned a lot. My head is spinning, it's a lot of ideas, a lot of new discoveries. So definitely we try to have more places like that on video for you. So anywhere you don't go yourself, we will go for you and share. And we have a cool interview with um, to be soon a professor of Nebraska University, um, Milish Zarek. He's been here a while now and he's a graduate uh, of uh, Nebraska University. Uh, and he's staying there uh, to continue uh, teaching and sharing his experience. And he also does a lot in this research center in terms of um, specifically um, the application of um, pesticides. So now we're going around the research center. We can see some more facilities here. Uh, how they hold things up. There's a, this is a historical alley. Um, famous trees, what they call them. Those trees are pretty old, and um, you can see this nice alley. It's nice to visit and ask questions and see for yourself what's going on here at the research center because we cannot ever stop the progress, innovation, and it starts somewhere in, in such a centers, university centers or uh, research centers. So it's nice kind of see everything in first hand um, where discoveries are born and use them first hand. <clears throat> and so be ahead of the game. Um, and definitely it's a cool, cool resource to ask questions to those who have a scientific proofs to everything you do every day. You know, you're kind of doing it and it's something works, something doesn't work, but these guys putting numbers to it and they make scientific sense to um, everything that farmer does daily. So guys, um, follow us on our social media, subscribe and get the news first. Uh, we will be happy to be your steward out here. So subscribe, follow, watch our videos, like it. If you like it, of course, uh, feel free to put your suggestions there in a nice form. Um, be open for any suggestions and uh, constructive um, criticism. Well, thank you for subscription and for your likes and looking forward uh, to see you guys soon again somewhere in the United States. lovely subscribers and everybody who's watching subscribe if you're not yet uh, we are here today with Nebraska University and uh, one of the uh, lovely students <laughs> of Nebraska University almost PhD right yep. graduate uh, Milos yep. nice, nice to finally meet you in yep, person likewise, likewise, thank you for I'm inviting us let's talk about you first yep. right um, what are you doing here? What is your relationship with Nebraska University? Yeah, well, thank, thanks a lot first for coming here to visit us. We really appreciate Metra Green and you finally to meet you in person. So as you mentioned, my name is Miller Zaric and I'm a graduate student here at the University of Nebraska. And right now we are located at the West Central Research Extension and Education Center. 
Wow. Yep. I would, no way I would yep. pronounce this, but that sounds very yep. cool. Take some practice. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So what is it you do here? Yep. Like, what is that research center for? I saw that it was um, established in 1903. Yes. So I guess it's still alive. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's been long in the business. Yep. <laughs> so I guess it's solving some cool problems mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's a cool research center. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of discoveries here, I guess. So mm -hmm. what is this all about? What do you guys do here? So we actually have quite diversified programs here, going from animal science that is a taking a pretty big portion here. Then we have the cropping system specialists. Then we have entomology specialists, prim primarily that they are doing research with different type of the pests, primarily insects, nematodes, and a lot of different things. And my focus is primarily associated how we actually apply different type of the pesticides pretty much for to apply them in the most safely manner and also to get the most out of the every single application that we are doing. And for me, I'm doing a lot of research with corn and soybeans. There are two major crops here that we are doing throughout Nebraska, but as well, I'm actually exploring a lot of new specialty crops as well that includes uh, industrial hemp and hops. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw some hops uh, mm -hmm. growing over there coming yep. in. I'm like, OK, where's the beer? Yeah. <laughs> OK, that's so cool. And I see that it's a quite a big facility, mm -hmm. right? And uh, um, pretty much you do all, all the, everything on site. You have your mm -hmm. own fields yep. here and stuff like that. And I saw you kind of playing with cover crops. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yep. So except in our plot location here, we can actually have irrigation lab as well, just a little bit uh, west from here. It's in, located in Brawl and we have a north farm and the south farm except this one. And that's pretty much for the old small plot research that we are doing here. If we want to go something bigger, we are actually going to that farm where we have actually the way more land to do bigger scale research and to approach something similar that even growers would do. In, in terms of the cover crops that we were able actually to talk yesterday, that's not necessarily directly part of my research, but I'm doing a lot of those demos to show growers and a lot of different stakeholders that we have here how they can integrate those. And primarily I was yesterday discussing, at least for the my station, what will be the good approach terminating those cover crops, depending on our goals. Hmm. So um, I heard that um, it's very specific for each a soil, um, each state uh, of what cover crops you use mm -hmm. and what are um, the termination time. Mm -hmm. um, I know like you here, you have some interesting blend you guys use. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. can you give me a little yep. touch up on that? So in terms of the different blends, as you mentioned, that that was pretty much every single field, there's a pretty much unique scenario that we need to think about what we are doing, when we are planting and what we are planting. We actually yesterday tested pretty much corn interseeded mix. Pretty much you would establish your corn, and later on you would come with the interseeder, and you, then you would plant your crop of, cover crop of the interest. The other ones that we actually wanted to experiment for growers to get a little bit more feeling about different mixtures, we actually planted as well the overwintering mix. Mm -hmm. And kind of the main takeaway for this one, they were able to see when is the time when you plant and how this one actually influence the establishment of the cover crops. Hmm. They were able to see quite well over wintering mix. It was still too early to plant for that one, at least in our region, but they were able to see this one. And ultimately those seeds will come up a little bit later. But right now we only have a couple species that they are out. Oh, I got you. So it's, it's really important to consider what you're growing for and what's your goal as well, because there is a lot of those well, what they are calling them ecosystem benefits that you can gain from the cover crops. Right. So mm -hmm. talking about that, what are the main key mm -hmm. benefits yep. you might get from implementing mm -hmm. that cover crops? Yep. So in, in our part here, primarily being corn growing state, we have a bit pretty big problems with nitrogen leaching. Okay. So integrating those cover crops in place, they typically tend to hold these nitrates at the higher levels. So they won't pretty much go into or will have the reduce the amount that is going toward the groundwater. So that's probably one of the big parts. The other part that we are beef state, we are growing a lot of beef, cattle, mm -hmm. pretty much for the steaks in Nebraska is I think every second or third steak sold in the US is actually coming from Nebraska. 
Yeah, so, so famous that's actually, Samaha yep, steaks. Exactly. <laughs> and um, the speakers we had yesterday, they were talking about that the whole cover crop idea, it's like a getting soil healthier, yes. solving like erosions problems as mm -hmm. well, even uh, weeds control in some degree, right? Yes. It's a long-term thing. It's yes. not like you can, mm -hmm. you know, get it done and get your mm -hmm. um, cover crops going and y your soil health increased uh, over like one year. Mm -hmm. Usually it's like what period of time? So if you're looking to increase, for example, percent of organic matter in the soil, minimally it will be, I think, five, seven to ten years just for one percent. Oh, so wow. it, it takes a lot of period of time because primarily we need to actually to get the microbial community healthy, then we need to provide them what they need, we need to select proper species for this one so we can actually gain something like this. So typically for those kind of the changes that we are looking take some time. And mm -hmm. all this time you have to kind of plant the same blend or you change each that, year? That, that is pretty much up to individual grower. For me, Pretty much I like to experiment things on the small scale, so I typically go with kind of the wide range of the mixtures. And plus, even within the every single mix, I go with the wider range of the species that I plant with. Right, because mm -hmm. I heard some people do just reddish and mm -hmm. wraps, yep. so some people actually prefer the blend. Yep. But then you have a cross-contamination cross kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. the, depending how you look at this one, it's I think more species, more diversity and ultimately more benefits. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess yep. it's a, you know, the adversity of cocktail. Exactly. It gives you exactly. more nutri nu nutrients to play mm. with. Exactly. Huh, I got you. And uh, usually what you use to terminate, mm -hmm. you know. So pr pretty, pretty common approach because it's a cost effective and all growers have the, those kind of this chemical approach. But I'm actually trying with different species even to do mechanical approach, either using the roller crimpers, different sizes, different weights, and a lot of different things or combination of a lot of those. So that's kind of the, my main focus. And typically what I like to do for the every single termination that we are doing, I typically set the cost associated with this one. So at least growers are able to see how much is the planting, how much is for seed, and plus on the end, how much they need to invest to terminate something like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's actually pre pretty good for them to have the idea a little bit more. Because farming is a business on the end, they need to know this one. For sure, for sure. And especially if you have a long-term goal, you know, when exactly. you start gaining from mm -hmm. it, you definitely need to, uh, to uh, count your costs. Mm -hmm. As far as a chemical approach, uh, is it better like just glyphosate, you know, all those mm -hmm. rollers you were mentioning, mm -hmm. or maybe a combination of them? So typically, especially for the yesterday, for the demos, we actually had the foxtail millet. And foxtail millet is qu quite sensitive to glyphosate. So pretty much even if you go with the lower rate of the glyphosate, you can actually control something like this. So yesterday, we were pretty much going everything at the full label rate at 32 fluid ounces per acre. And you were able to see even after three days after application, how those plots looks like. Everything right. was turning yellow. And the good thing about the foxtail millet is actually the C to N ratio or carbon, um, carbon to nitrogen ratio is actually pretty high, which ultimately means that those residues, regardless of the way how we terminate this one, will stay in the field for a longer period of time. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's it's a lot to learn. Yeah. Like my my, my yeah. brain is spinning. So pr pretty much we are learning about the individual species, what what are the requirements and plus what we can gain from this one just knowing all of those kind of the small ratios that they are provided and that's amazing mm -hmm. and um let's say a farmer out there want to know more about your mm -hmm. researches yep. and what you guys do uh kind of follow your lead mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. see what you come up with and mm -hmm. new new discoveries where they can follow yep. you so for this yep purpose? so they can actually follow me on twitter it's pretty much at m i l o s then lower hyphen and then it's a UNL. So it's Milos UNL. So that, that will be actually the part where I'm sharing a lot of those kind of the things. The other ways we will how we can do- will put it in, in yep. description to yep. this video. So, sounds good. And then the other part is going directly to the station at the West Central Research and Extension Center. Mm -hmm. That's actually where we actually generate a lot of data points and then we are sharing. And are you sharing like one-on-one or is it like public? So it's a public and then we are doing hashtags with all of our university research, extension, uh, okay. Institute for Natural Resources and a lot of those things that they actually even share, retweet, and then we are getting kind of the bigger spread of the people or potential people that they are actually 
uh, potential mm -hmm. hits, how they are calling right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to figure out where we find that mm -hmm. connection point. Yeah. Like, how did you discover Metra? Yeah. How you came across of us? Because your research is a bit, a bit like a side from like grain cleaning yeah. needs. Yep. Like, so can you please yep. share? Oh, of course. That that was actually quite interesting part, how we got to find Metro Grain and to even talk with you. So, is, as I mentioned, I'm doing also research in specialty crops, and one of them is industrial hemp. And the challenge with industrial hemp being relatively new crop that we can grow, pretty much from 2019, we can grow this one in the United States. Mm -hmm. There was a pretty big challenge first. We needed to learn how to grow, how to plant, how to establish, how to control pests, and then on the end, harvest. Right. So I was able to figure out pretty much everything from planting to harvest, but then afterwards, after starting growing hemp, I was actually getting into some of the plants that they are even nine feet tall. And the challenge about this one for our small plot research machines that we have, we can barely reach even five to six feet. Wow. So we needed to find a way how to harvest. And then when we overcome this one, the next challenge was how to clean seeds. Right. And then because for us primarily we want to have something replicate, especially in yields that we are looking to get something representative and potentially even that is marketed on the end. So you grew the monster yeah. and you try yeah. to figure out how to deal with it. Exactly. And here when we came across with, yeah. the, with the seed cleaning and stuff. Yep. Then I started doing a lot of research and then one of the first hits that I was able to see Metro Grain. So I gave a shot, went there, sent an email through contact info and then we got connected that way. Well, yeah, truly we're trying to do everything. We we um, implementing the latest innovation systems in, in all our equipment. We control everything from the metal quality to, mm -hmm. to the final product. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we try to be a leader mm -hmm. of the industry. And I think at the moment we are. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep on going with that legacy. What you were able to accomplish, mm -hmm. you know, using mm -hmm. of, uh, I, I believe you, you use one of our ADS yes. units. Yes. Yes. It's an ADS 200. Uh, airflow unit. So what were you able to accomplish with that? So one of the things that I was able to accomplish typically when we finish harvest, we'll let the samples dry and then we pretty much remove everything from the seed heads. Uh -huh. That is really important for us to get the quality data point on the end. But one of the big challenges in the cleaning part, there was mm -hmm. a lot of the residues staying from the flowers, leaves, leaf petioles and everything. Right. And then when I was getting there, there was a lot of impurities there. How were we defined impurities? Can be even the weed seeds and a lot of different things. We didn't have the challenge with the weed seeds, but more primarily impurities were associated with flower, leaf petioles and leaf stem, as I mentioned. And right. for us, actually, when we started running samples, actually, I was able to see quite good progress how those are getting cleaned. And uh, first, my expectation was only to remove the impurities that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But the other part, when I was actually, I knew this one from literature, reading, learning about hemp, is actually the indeterminate uh, nature of the hemp. We're actually within the single seed head, we have a pretty wide range of the seed maturity groups. Okay. Which was actually pretty thinking, when I was thinking, I started cleaning seeds and then I was able to see, okay, one side we are getting brown seed, the other side we are getting green. And then I was able to easily to match up, okay, this one makes sense. Yeah. Right. How we can actually even accept of the reading, so we were able to get rid of the impurities there, but at the same time we were able actually just do you doing the airflow and the separation by the seed weight, we were able to get separated those mature seed from non-mature seed. It, that was actually pretty cool for me because I was able to even see how much within the sample I have those green seeds. Yeah, that's what pretty much machine does. It splits mm -hmm. bulk material and heavier, lighter, lighter, lighter. Mm -hmm. And it appears that the mature, like a nice plumber seeds, the uniform seed, that would be the heaviest yes. one. And uh, darkest one mm -hmm. you know as more mature as darker it gets yes and when you separate them you definitely save a lot mm -hmm. you know for for the seed material even if you do like um you know the hulling in in mm -hmm. in, in hearts mm -hmm. it's much better uh quality um, that inside hearts in the mature grain mm -hmm. versus the green one it's mm -hmm. just a waste of yep. machinery time and place in the field if you want to you know the, yep. the, so, so the, there, there is a just one big thing when i was learning more about the regulations about seed there is a big difference between united states and the canada because canada was growing hemp from 92 
We right. just pretty much started here. And one of the things that they are actually pushing in terms of the regulation, especially whoever is marketing seeds on the end, there needs to be lower than 0.1% of those green seeds within the sample. Wow. That, that, that is really important for you as a one that will be ultimately on the end selling seed to someone. You need to follow these r rules and regulations. Here in the United States, we are still a little bit flexible because people are still learning how to grow. But I think ultimately that one will change here. Yeah, and the oh. main reason why I'm thinking why this one will change here, because right now mostly of the seeds from where we are importing them is actually from Canada. So does that mean, if it's like 0.1%, mm -hmm. does it mean that it's ultimately 99% germination? So not, not necessarily. Not yeah, necessarily. Not necessarily. Every single seed will actually have, you will need to do a germination test. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Because from what I know, we have customers in, in Colorado who are growing hemp mm -hmm. or, or medical hemp or industrial hemp. And uh, specifically, uh, seed is more expensive mm -hmm. when it has a higher germination rate mm -hmm. and oh, they have yes. a way to test it. Mm -hmm. And definitely, actually, uh, to help with that, beside the air machine, which separate by density heavier from lighter, mm -hmm. we also have a color sorters where they separate darker in the lighter seeds. So mm -hmm. they even more increase the germination because as darker, as we already spoke mm -hmm. right about it, as more mature mm -hmm. seed is and more possibility with that uniform seed, a better and simultaneous mm -hmm. germination and uh, maturation mm -hmm. uh, chances. We are so thrilled to work with you guys because you know, we learn a lot about our product as we go. Like ultimately it was a grain cleaner mm -hmm. and then we improve and improve with our customers help because you know, we, they were getting back with us like, okay, this is too big, this is too heavy, this is wrong, we need this way, that way. So over the time we grew a lot in the design of the machine and abilities, mm -hmm. what it can do. And we learn on the way that we can actually do some other cool things you know, which we didn't know of. Mm -hmm. Because as our customers was getting specific problems and we start solving them, we were discovering that, hey, we can do, you know, funguses, we can do IDK, we mm -hmm. can do that seed situation, you know, yeah. mature and immature stuff like that. So uh, what we're now looking for is basically to merge our innovation systems and your science point mm -hmm. and see what discoveries we can have. You know what I mean? I'm yep. pretty sure it's more discoveries coming. And mm -hmm. for that purpose, this baby is going to stay here in the research center with you guys. That's um, our gift. So hopefully uh, we will get some cool discoveries for, for the whole industry. Mm -hmm. And um, I really hope you will be able to maybe teach a new generation of the future mm -hmm. agronomists. So whoever you guys have, yep. students who can push buttons, play with it, and apply the um, energy, the yeah. young energy, the talents, um, yeah. and come up with something even mm -hmm. cooler than we can possibly think of. What do you think you might use it for? So, well, first, I, I, we need really just to say thank you for Metrograin for this donation. I think it will be really important for us developing even future research from this one. I really and, hope and, so. and, and, and ju just to add, actually, the additional part, September 18, we'll have the Youth Science Field Days. So we'll actually have a lot of high schools in the area coming here this way to learn about different things. Wow. And one of the things that I'm actually planning actually to increase the awareness what they can do. Because most of those kids are coming from the farms and they need to see how those things work and even to start thinking about what they are doing next. That is really wow. important for us. That's amazing. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. yeah we, are, we are expecting about 250 to 300 kids to go through those two days that we have, September 18 and 19. It's an all matter of varieties of a grain you, mm -hmm. can, uh, you can put together for that sampling and mm -hmm. just keep on going, make mm -hmm. this work. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for having us over. I really hope it's going to serve you well. And we're looking forward for discoveries you might have and, you know, to learn from you guys mm -hmm. where the... Um, and the Nebraska um, Research Center is where the innovation meets the science and we're going to have some more cool discoveries. So stay tuned. We're going to get this news to you first. 
Uh, so subscribe and you will receive that news number one. Yep. Thank you so much, Miller. It was yep. such a pleasure. You had a great event yesterday and I think we had a good communication today. So we keep on going and see how we can do good for mm -hmm. that community around here in Nebraska and all over the United States, you know, because each farmer might find something useful, mm -hmm. I think, from your guys' uh, work. Yep. Thank you. Yep, thank you, Anna. We look forward to working with you more. Yep, we will. Thank you.